All right, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon or good evening. This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and today we're going to talk about Newton's method. Now, Newton's method is something that we'll learn about as an approximation technique. So I'm sure you're asking, what actually is Newton's method? Well, it's a numerical technique that you can use to approximate solutions that you can't find exactly. So if we had a problem like fifth root of 32, we could figure out that, that value to be 2. Or the cubed root of 8, that's 2 also. But sometimes you get problems where you've got to estimate the cubed root of 10 or the fifth root of 33. We've got no idea what those values are because they're not nice even whole number integers. So Newton's method is a way that we can use to help us out and approximate those solutions. Now very often you'll be presented with problems that are similar to this where you'll be told find, use Newton's method to find a fifth root of 23. So you can write this several different ways but the one that we're going to focus on is going to be the last one f of x equals f x to the fifth minus 23. Now to work with this what you're going to do is you're going to set up a chart similar to the one below. Now the n column that's just going to represent the number of iterations or guesses and tries that we're going to utilize for our approximation. The x sub n that's going to be our x value. The column that has f of x sub n that is going to be what we get when we plug in the x value to our function. And then the f prime of x sub n, that's really going to be our slope at that particular x value. Now what we're going to do is actually we've got to come up with an initial guess. That's always going to be our first step. And so one of the things we have to do, so I'm going to go back here for a second, just kind of work through a couple of pieces. We want the cube or the fifth root of 23. So we're going to try and figure out like, all right, what is that? So I've got to figure out the two perfect fifths that are closest to that. Now the fifth root of one is just one and the fifth root, the next perfect fifth is 32. So my value for the fifth root of 23 has got to be somewhere between the numbers one and two. So my initial guess, what I'm going to do with that is just guess halfway in between those. I'm going to guess 1.5. So what I'm going to do then is take that 1.5 and that's going to go in that first space right here. And then I'm going to use my calculator to evaluate the function f of x at that value of 1.5. But if you notice next to that, I also need the derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative of my function. And this is pretty straightforward. That's just going to be 5x to the fourth power. So I'm going to need both of those values. And then the rest is going to be pretty straightforward calculator plugging and chugging. And I'll show you how to get your calculator set up as we do this. What I want you to do is go ahead and set up your calculator like so. The first thing you want to do is set your table up so we can input our own values. So we're going to set our table on ask. Our independent variable is going to be set to ask. And to get there, remember you hit second and then the window key. Next, in the y equals menu, what we're going to do in y1 is put the original function. In y2, we're going to put the derivative of that function. And then in y3 and y4, those are going to be the other two columns. Now, if you forget how to put in the y1 or the y2, let me just review that with you really quickly. So in your y equals menu, what you're going to do first is hit the vars key. Then you're going to arrow over to y vars. Next, you'll choose function number one. And then in this menu, you see all of the different variables that we can use to put in for there. So we have y1, y2, y3, and y4. So that's how you get to that spot. So go ahead and get your calculator set up correctly as it's shown here. Now, once your calculator is set up correctly, what you're going to do next is you're going to go ahead and you're going to input that initial guess of 1.5 into your table of values. So once you get that input, then the rest is going to be simply filling in your chart. So in y1, we're going to write that negative 
15.41. In Y2, we'll have 25.313. And then we're going to have to arrow over a little bit to come up with Y3 and Y4. And we'll go ahead and type those values, or put those values in the Y3 and Y4 columns. Now, once we've finished filling out that first row, what we're going to do is we're going to take that very last value that we came up with, 2.1086. And that's the x value that we're going to use next. So here is where we'll put that in. And then in our graphing calculator, we'll type that in 2.1086. And again, we'll continue to fill out the chart. So I want you to go ahead and do that for the next several iterations. So go ahead and hit pause and fill out the rest of the chart using your graphing calculator. Now, hopefully, both of our charts look pretty similar. Now what I want you to pay attention to is in the third row, that very last value, 1.8722. When we use that to start off our initial guess in row four, notice at the end of row four, we get the same value. So that tells us we're done. Now what I want you to do is go back to your graphing calculator and check this out. If you do the fifth root of 23, if I do that, check it out, I'll get a value of 1.8721712331. So the fifth root of 23 is about 1.8722, and we did that simply using algebra. So thank you, Newton, for introducing us to that technique for helping us approximate the solution to finding the root of a problem. There are several other techniques you can use, and there's even cases when Newton's method can't work. And if you think about it just from a graphical perspective for a moment, a lot of times, say you'll have a function that looks like this. And if it's quadratic or just kind of part of it looks like this, notice this thing never crosses the x-axis. So of course, it's not going to have a real number solution. So Newton's method wouldn't work in this case. There's several other cases that Newton's method won't work. And we'll talk about those ones later with your teacher, I'm sure. All right, so thanks for watching today. Hopefully by now you guys know how to use your graphing calculator to solve, to help you solve Newton's method problems. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Peace out.